Hello everyone, thank you very much for coming to check this out. For our next tutorials we're going to be looking at these compound shapes in motion. So this is all from another After Effects reproduction, it's the Ribbons project. There's a link in the description if you want to check out that project at the Envato Market. From the reproduction you can see that we can do these ribbons just fine in motion. But what we're going to focus on at first is these compound shapes. So these are the heart and soul of the animations. They animate in and then morph into a secondary state before they morph back and animate out again. So we're going to tackle each of these space styles one by one in order of difficulty. So for this session we're going to do this one, this one, this one, this one and these ones and these are all just variations of the same process and then we will look at this one here and then this one and then finally this style here. And when we've covered all these primary base shapes, when that's all done, then we can look at doing uh, one or two full ribbons with all the extra details as well. But for these compound shapes, okay, for beginners, uh, we've got two goals, right? We want to animate these compound shapes, but then we want to make them practical for use in a Final Cut Titles template. And that means we've got to animate, but also publish some form of user control for these. And that's what we're going to focus on as well. Okay, yeah, let's get into a project and get started then. Okay, here we are in a new project, uh, starting from the very beginning. It's just 1920 by 1080 HD, 30 frames a second, 10 seconds duration. So I'm going to grab this group and add a rectangle using the shape tool, center that layer. In geometry, we can give it a width of 800 and then for height we'll go for 100 there and I'll just rename this as base and then this as base as well. The next step is to take that base layer and duplicate it so command D to duplicate. I'm going to rename this as upper and I'm going to give it another color so we can tell it apart as we go through each step. So upper one here in geometry, let's change the height to 50. And I want the anchor point for this to sit right at the bottom. So in properties, I'll set the, the anchor point on the Y to minus 25. So it's a 50 height and I want the anchor point to be at the bottom. So I'll halve the height to sit there perfectly. Then I'm going to come to shape and convert to points. This point here, two, let's delete that. Then point one, we want to sit right in the middle. So it makes this triangle. And then we're going to come to properties, position, Y, and add a link behavior. Call this one edge and we'll drag in the base layer as the source and choose attributes, edges, top. You might not be able to see it but when we link this way there's going to be about a pixel's worth of a gap between each layer. So to get over that, we're going to set an edge offset of minus one. Next, we're going to grab this upper layer, grab the X scale, and we're going to add a link, drag in the base as the source. We'll just call this one here scale X. Right, so now you see if we adjust the base layer scale, then the top layer is going to follow along. Uh, okay, so time to start animating these layers now. 
and we're going to do it over one second. So I'm going to take this base X scale, and at first. Okay, so we're just going to look at animating, uh, and then next we're going to look at animating for Final Cut. So we are fine to just use keyframes for now. I'm going to set uh, scale at zero, and then 20 frames later, we'll set that to 100. And just finesse this a little all right and from the 20th frame to one second 10 frames later we'll set another keyframe and set that scale to 80 percent okay now this top layer here it's following the base on the X, but it's still independent on its Y scale. So remember we have we have the anchor point right at the bottom, so if we adjust the Y scale, it's going to flatten out. So what we want is actually, I'll just come back to the base shape here, and we're on frame 27. Let's change that. What we've got here, we've got one, one, two, three frames. All right. I'm going to change this to one, two, three. We'll go this way instead. Okay. So now back to this Y layer. We are going to set this Y scale to. zero. So that's at a hundred. We're going to set this to zero and then set a keyframe here. And then at this frame here, one second, we will set that to 100. And finesse the curve to match. So we got one, two, three. Okay, there we go. So I think you can see the general idea of what we're doing. This is how our compound shape is going to come together. Um, before we add the bottom layer, let's animate out, and we want to animate out in reverse. And we are gearing towards a Final Cut title, okay? So we're not going to do the clone method of reversing, because that won't be available to you as a Final Cut title. We'll just reverse out manually, so I'm going to grab these keyframes here, right click and copy, and come to one second back from the end, set a keyframe there and paste, and then just choose reverse keyframes. And we want to go one, two, three. I'm choosing to do this way. You can just leave it as the direct mirror if you like. But this is actually matching the speed curve on the way in. And we'll grab the base layer. This might get messy, let's see. So I want to come back uh, one second. And reverse. Right, okay. One, two, three. Not too messy. Okay, which is good. And then, where are we? Frame seven there. So, one, two, th no, from here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, there you go, a little lesson on 
manually reversing keyframes. Okay, that will do. So next we can add the bottom layer. For the bottom layer, we're just going to follow the same steps uh, that we did before. Grab the, grab the base, Command D, duplicate that. But we can get rid of this uh, scale animation, uh, get rid of the scale keyframes. Let's call this lower and then we'll give it another color as well so we can tell it apart. And then again in geometry, give it uh, 50 for height. Then in the anchor point though, we want positive 25. So you can see the anchor points right there. And we are going to grab this shape, convert it to points. And let's delete control point four there. So what does that leave us with here? Number three. So we'll take three and set that one to zero. So there's our triangle again. And we're going to grab this edge link from upper. Just alt drag that to lower. So we've got a copy of that now uh, applied. But we're going to change from top edge to edges bottom. And we want that offset to now be positive one. Okay, and then uh, let's Command C to copy this scale link and paste that onto lower as well. Then we want to grab lower here, come to Y, scale, and we're going to add a link and drag an upper as the source for that. Scale Y. So let's have a look at what we've got now. Okay, so lastly, let's get rid of. Uh, well, we're going to grab upper and come to color, add a link, drag and base as the source. Uh, Command C copy that and paste it to the lower. So now we have our compound shape animating in and it should animate out again as well all together. Okay so at this stage we've got uh, the base animation, we've got the base compound shape working and here it is again. So like I said in the introduction, uh, these first shapes are the easiest ones to do. They are just variations of this first uh, method here. So to get your shape variations, uh, there's two ways to go. So the first, of course, well, if you want just the upper, turn off the lower. So, or if you just want the lower, turn off the upper. Uh, but for the actual shape itself, you just want to contour the top layer. And we can do that by making these points smooth. So right away, uh, if I come to the lower and do the same. So I'll leave you to work on your own creations and see what you can do with that. Uh, it's always a good idea to have your guides turned on if you're going to work with your control points. So we're at um, minus 320 over here. Let's go to 200 on that side and 200 on this side. So if you want to flatten things out, use your guides so that you can get uh, symmetry going. Okay, so you can contour the shape uh, like that, and then 
you can, uh, what was it, 0.1 for the top, wasn't it? So 0.1 for, oh, no, not the X. Okay. By adjusting these points, you can add more contour as you like as well. For example, right, uh, so we could go on forever about all the different things you can do. I think by now uh, you can see clearly uh, what we can do. Just going to undo all of that, get back to the beginning. Uh, okay, so let's have a look at an alternate way to get different contour or different uh, styling for the shape. Okay, uh, so to show you first, let's make a duplicate of this. Let's just call this uh, base one and then duplicate that, call this one base two. So let's turn off two, we'll grab base one and move it down. Uh, okay, so for this one now, let's grab the upper layer, just edit points here. Let's start to make this uh, smooth. So throw that over there and over there, and we'll do the same for the lower one. Um, this is how I work with it. You might know more efficient ways, but this is how I get it done. Okay, so we've got this result from that. All right, so let's turn on base two, and we are going to do the same thing there. Grab upper. points there smooth and to there and lower make that smooth okay uh, but this time what we're going to do is remove these scale links Remove the X scale links, and we're going to grab the base for this one. We'll just turn off base one for now. Grab the base for this one, duplicate it. I'm going to call this layer here clip. Okay, and clip, uh, come to scale, reset that X scale, and add a link the scale use base as the source okay so now it has the same X scale anim animation as the base but what we're going to do now is give it uh, we'll give it another color to tell it apart let's make this height something gigantic and then for upper add an image mask drag and clip and lower add an image mask as well, drag and clip. You could group upper and lower and just mask them in the one go. Okay, so now we get this result instead. And if we turn on the original, you can see the subtle difference there. So uh, with the first one, the area stays the same. I think I'm, I'm probably not putting that in the right terms, but in the top example, you see that um, the area has been shifted around as it morphs into the second state as well. All right, so that's another twist you can add to get more variation with the shape and the morphed state. Okay, so we've looked at how to do the, the basic compound shape, animating in and reversing out, and some ways to get different shape styles going as well. But what we want to look at now is how to make this something practical for the user in Final Cut. So I've converted this motion, I've converted the motion project we were using to a Final Cut title now. I've added a section divider here to put our published parameters in. And what we want to talk about now, so I'm speaking to you, the beginner, who's just taking the first steps to making titles for Final Cut. And I'll tell you that, you know, it's one thing to animate in motion for to get a, an effect working, 
but then it's another thing altogether to make that animation something useful in Final Cut. So if we're just to look at our shape here, what would we want to provide? Okay, so we can provide the color, of course. Now how about the height? Okay, so we've used length, so if I come to the base Y scale, that's free. It's not animated, okay, it's free. We're going to change how this is done anyway. That's free, so I can publish this freely. So that can give us our the height, but it's the length which is the sticking point, and that's where we want to look at going about things a different way. And what you're going to see here is something I've done in the previous guys we've done uh, automated titles, but we're going to do it again in this situation. And it's something that's useful uh, for many different situations as well. So it's how to animate and publish at the same time. Uh, okay, so for beginners, the basic principle is this. If you have keyframed a parameter, you can't publish it. If I do publish that, what will happen in Final Cut is that I'm actually telling Final Cut to ignore all the preset animations I've done. So if you publish a keyframed parameter, Final Cut will just treat that as dormant and it will ignore it. So we don't want to publish anything that we have keyframed directly. We want to animate with keyframes uh, or through behaviors in a different way and that's what we'll look at now. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is create a new group, and I'm going to call this group the null. And in this group, I'm going to put a shape layer. It can be anything. Um, let's just center that on the X. We'll make it a uniform size. Okay, so this shape layer has properties. It has all the same properties as this layer. So what we're going to do with this layer is we're going to always be mindful of, of where our keyframes are. So we've got keyframes on the 20th and the 30th frame and then on the way out as well. We're going to reset this X animation on the X scale. So now that's what we've got, right? Nothing's happening with that base shape at all. Uh, we're going to give it a value of zero now actually and then what we're going to do is we are going to add a link scale X and we're going to drag in this null as the source and I'm going to call that null one for now Okay, so you see that with this link on, right? If I turn it off, we've got zero. If I turn it on, we've got 100%. So inside of the link behavior, you're going to see this value here, the custom mix slider. Well, this is the mix value, mix over time. It's set to custom by default, and we can slide that between zero as, as an off to 1 as an on. And so by animating this, we can get our animation back. So let's set this at, um, we're going to go here, we're going to set a keyframe and we're going to make that 0.8. We're going to go here, set that keyframe and make that 1, and come back here set our keyframe at zero and we want to return the finesse we had on these curves originally gets a bit messy when we use this process you can see how quirky it gets down here in the keyframe editor but we'll just push through that so it was uh, one two three yep and one two three okay cool and then we want to come back here and we want to do the same. So set a keyframe from there to there. 
and that's going to be one and out set the keyframe that's going to be zero and we want to reverse all these seven one two three four five six seven okay to there to there and one two three to there and there Okay, so you see by animating this link, we have the same animation that we had before. So from here, we're going to take this null layer and publish the X parameter as our link control. works just fine perfectly so why do we do this okay so for beginners uh, like I've mentioned before and in the other guides I've posted about making titles it's one thing to animate shapes and layers in motion to do something but then to make that something that's practical for use in Final Cut that's another skill and when you build your titles build from the ground up to make it possible so now in Final Cut, the user uh, can adjust the height, they can adjust the length, and the animation is intact with every change that's made. So this makes it possible for all different kinds of font size and sentence length and height. So uh, that's one benefit of publishing through the null is that you can animate and then publish as well. But then, of course, it's motion, and the elephant in the room is, well, why not do this through behaviors? Because the whole point of behaviors is, again, that you can animate and then publish at the same time. So the first answer to that question is, we are using behaviors. We're using the link behavior. And the link behavior is doing that job for us perfectly. This behavior here is allowing us to animate with finesse and publish the parameter that is animated. So then we might think about using the ramp behavior instead. And the ramp behavior is only something I'd ever want to use if it is important to have duration controls. So let's take this um, layer here and I'm going to add ramp behavior to it so it's at 100% so we're going to start that at minus 100 let's just have this uh, animate for a second so I'm going to grab this end offset bring it all the way over here right okay so check this out here's the ramp behavior right so this is animated but I can put this value onto a slider. Actually, let's change how we've published this. So I'm going to set this natural, uh, turn that off. I'll set this natural scale to zero. Okay, and then we'll turn the ramp and we'll have a start offset at zero in, in value at 100. Okay, so we'll work this way now. Right, so now I can publish this in value. Call it length. And look, I can animate and publish at the same time, which is great. But the big difference between using the ramp behavior and using link and null is the finesse. Look at this speed curve down here. So using through null, we get the nice um, variation with speeds. 
With the ramp behavior, the best you can get is an ease in and out, which is plain and boring and good for some things and not good for other things. And in this case, to reproduce the ribbon uh, project, it's not good enough. But as I said, uh, ramp is useful for when we want to rig duration controls. And uh, I've put up a guide about rigging for duration controls before, so I'll link to that. So if you're curious, you'll see what I mean. Uh, but yeah, so let's just get rid of that for now. I think I've made my point of why we want to animate through a null. So we'll turn that off so in the actual title you wouldn't see it, right? Okay, so that is how we would provide uh, a length control for the first state. Let's just reset that. So that provides this length, right? But there is also a second length, the morphed state. And we can do a control for that as well. So let's have a look at that too. So before we get started on that, I'll just say we're going to do this uh, as a learning activity. Not because this kind of template really demands it. I think to have just the, the main length is probably enough. Um, having an adjustable control for the final length. So we've got first state length and final state length. Having an adjustable control for the final state length, probably not going to make or break this template, right, for utility for the user. But let's do it. Let's go through the exercise so that for beginners out there you can learn uh, another step further from this kind of animation and then it will be useful for you in a million different situations when you make your motion templates for Final Cut. So first of all let's grab this null, let's duplicate it, we're going to call it null2. Then we're going to come to this original uh, link that has null1 as the source. Let's just call this x null1 now and we're going to come to this keyframe and get rid of it. Get rid of it. Okay. So now it just animates to there. So we've lost the retraction, the contraction altogether. Okay, cool. So this link runs the duration of the project. What we're going to do now is grab base, come to the X, and we're going to add a second link. And we're going to take this null 2, and we're going to set this at 80%, right? So let's turn these back on. I'll move null 2 down give it another color so we can tell it part. So I'm going to call this one x null 2. Watch what happens when we drag in null 2 as the source. So because null 2 is first in the timeline, it's overriding null 1, which is second in the timeline. Okay, but again, we've got this custom mix slider here, so when I set that between 0 and 1, then you see null 1 is handing over control to null 2 and vice versa. So what we want then, we want null 2 to be dormant off until this frame. And at this frame, we're going to start giving it control over the scale. So from here to here, we're going to keyframe that from 0 to 1. And we want to finesse that the same way that we have before. And right here, we want to set a keyframe so that between that frame and that frame, it goes back to zero and hands control back to null one.
Okay, so this is what we've got. You see our animation is back, just as it was before, but now we have this second value that we can publish. And like I said, it's probably not going to, well, for this animation, uh, I'd be fine to leave it out. But I'm sure you can think of, well, in the future, you might come across a situation when you need to give two uh, parameter values, an initial and a final. And now uh, you see there's a way to go about it. So we can call this length final. Let's just call that length 2, length 1. So look what we can do now. OK. And we'll turn these off. Right, and that about wraps it up. That's all we need to do for this first uh, basic shape. But what we looked at for publishing is going to be relevant for pretty much all the shapes we're going to do from here. And if you're a beginner, just remember this method because it's going to uh, make many more things possible than you thought might be possible with motion. Okay, um, that's that for this one, so I will do my best to find the time to post content, uh, post the next tutorial for the next Morphing Shape. Until then, thank you very much for checking it out. Thanks for watching.